Hi guys, welcome to the High Yield Review for the MSK module. This review is set up as a matching game. I would recommend that you pause the slides when I show you the slide without the answers. Try to match the columns yourself. And then once you're ready, you can unpause to hear the answers. So let's get started. Okay, starting with some bone pathology. All right, so osteonecrosis. And necrosis, right? There's ischemia, which can lead to necrosis and um, death of the tissue. This is associated with glucocorticoids. You can get thrombosis of bone marrow sinusoids with um, long-term glucocorticoid use. And um, this shows up as a yellow wedge-shaped infarct on the bone. Paget's disease. Um, is mostly seen in middle to older age men, um, mostly in Caucasian men, and um, this disease can progress to osteosarcoma. What we see um, on, I guess, uh, on imaging is this thing called matrix madness, where you have osteoblasts constantly forming new bone and osteoclasts constantly resorbing bone. Um, so you see these different stages of you know, the new bone being developed into mature bone, um, along with resorption of bone, and that's what gives it the classic matrix madness um, name. And we see increased ALP levels in these patients. Ricketts is deficiency of vitamin D and in children. Deficiency of vitamin D in adults is osteomalacia, but in kids, it's called Ricketts. And what we see on imaging is frayed metaphysis with disorganized wide growth plate. Achondroplasia uh, is one of the differentials for short stature. You have FGFR3 mutation, which is the autosomal dominant mutation, and you basically don't get any endochondral growth or any lengthening of the long bones. So your long bones fail to grow in length, However, uh, appositional growth is reserved or preserved, so your axial skeleton grows normally, but the limbs are, end up being really short. Okay, number five, osteogenesis imperfecta. This is an abnormal collagen type one disorder, and you have these classic symptoms like intrauterine fractures, the fetus, blue sclera, skeletal deformities, um, teeth and in, in for imperfections and curing impairment. Okay, number six is Marfan syndrome. Marfan's has the classic triad of aortic aneurysms, arachnodactyly, and ectopic lens. It's a mutation of the fibrillin gene on chromosome 15. And osteopetrosis is an osteoclast dysfunction. Uh, because the osteoclasts, they are they have a mutation in the chloride channel or the carbonic anhydrase channels, and they're unable to release the acid that they need in order to resorb the bone. So we don't get any bone resorption, uh, and the osteoblasts keep making new bone, which gives us these thicker yet weaker bones, and um, the thicker bones show up as an Erlenmeyer flask-like shape. Um, with the broad, broader ends of the bones. Okay, so moving on, um, let's go through some bone infections real quick. What's the mo most common cause of osteomyelitis? It's staph aureus. In neonates, it's mostly H flu and group B strep. Sickle cell is mostly salmonella. Genitourinary spread, basically you get a UTI and then it spreads to the bones. That's your E. coli. And then TB can spread to the vertebrae, um, and then we call that POTS disease. All right, moving on. So joint pathology. Rheumatoid arthritis is in younger people, and we see destruction of articular cartilage with inflammation. Osteoarthritis is in older folks, and we see destruction of articular cartilage without inflammation. Okay, so that's the difference between them. Rheumatoid arthritis, remember that it's positive for um, rheumatoid factor, our anti-CCP SSA antibodies, and HLA DR1 and DR4. Number three is ankylosing spondylitis, the bamboo spine disease or the stiff spine, um, and this is associated with HLA B27. Gout and pseudogout. So gout is in younger folks. Pseudogouts, we see in a more older over 50 population. 
So in gout, we see monosodium urate crystals. In pseudogout, we see calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Six is your polymyalgia rheumatica. Um, this is seen mostly in women. It's an inflammatory condition, so you have elevated ESR and CRP. It's mostly um, this non-specific pain in their shoulders or their um, hip joints, so like the girdle joints. And um, we treat this by giving, uh, we treat this with steroids to control the inflammation. And then gonococcal arthritis. Uh, is the classic triad of uh, symptoms with the migratory polyarthritis. So they, they're going to have pain in the knee one day and then it's going to migrate to the elbow like that. And dinosynovitis and dermatitis, the classic triad. Okay, so that's joint pathology. Moving on to some tumors. So osteosarcoma, um, this is uh, a very aggressive tumor mostly in the knee towards um, the, uh, you know, the, um, well, the knee, and uh, mostly in 20 year old, so like teenage to early 20s. Um, usually there has to be a history of Paget's disease if it's an older patient, or radiotherapy exposure if it's an older patient. However, if the patient is like we said in the teens and younger, um, it's mostly due to a retinoblastoma gene mutation. So um, kids in early years who develop retinoblastoma um, in the eyes have a very high probability of developing osteosarcoma in their teenage years. On x-ray, you can see this classical Codman's triangle and the sunburst pattern. Ewing sarcoma is um, an aggressive tumor of the long bone diaphysis, so the shaft of the bone. It's associated with the T1122 mutation, also seen in um, patients less than 20, mostly less than 20 years old, mostly in men. And on x-ray, you see this onion skinning appearance where you can see the different layers of the bone kind of coming apart. On histology, you see the classic Homer right rosettes like in option C here. Osteochondroma is a benign cancer, it's, uh, it's a benign tumor, and it usually located in the knee, it involves the growth plate, so right here is the growth plate, it involves the growth plate, um, and you can even see the bone marrow uh, kind of go inwards into this little protrusion here, and this protrusion has a cap of hyaline cartilage. All right, moving on to osteoporotic drugs. So your bisphosphonate and bronates, these are the drugs that inhibit directly inhibit your osteoclasts. Adverse effects of these drugs are osteonecrosis of your jaw and reflux esophagitis. So you're supposed to sit upright for 30 minutes um, after taking this drug. The second is um, desmonuma. This is a monoclonal antibody. This suppresses the osteoclast by blocking rank ligand. Raloxifene is your estrogen agonist or your CIRM, selective estrogen receptor. One of the adverse effects you want to remember about estrogen receptors is uh, venous thromboembolism. And then PTH is, um, causes osteoblast activation. So we actually have this drug called teriparatide, which is a recombinant PTH, which we can use um, for formation of new bone. And vitamin D um, helps to increase intestinal uptake of calcium. So we can also use vitamin D to help form new bone. All right. So skeletal muscle relaxants. Let's talk about these. So your succinylcholine is your depolarizing uh, agent. And you can see here there's two phases to how this works. The phase one, it does a depolarizing blockade. And phase two, uh, the membrane gets desensitized from the constant, um, you know, depolarization. Options two and three are a non-depolarizing agent. Rocuronium, cis-atracurium, and vicoronium are the short or intermediate acting non-depolarizing agents, whereas pancuronium and tubocurine are the long acting non-depolarizing agents. 
Diazepam and baclofen, they are CNS acting spasmolytics. And botulinum and dandrolene are the direct muscle acting spasmolytics. Uh, botulinum, if you remember, acts on the snares, and dandrolene acts on your rionidine receptors. Oh, and I forgot to mention about diazepam and baclofen. Uh, the CNS acting spasmolytics, um, they act on the GABA receptors. Diazepam acts mostly on our GABA A, whereas baclofen um, acts on our GABA B receptors. And one thing you should know is how do you reverse, um, you know, uh, uh, reversal agents of your uh, neuromuscular junction blockers, for example, succinylcholine, and you're going to give them acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, which is neostigmine. All right, moving on. Rheumatoid arthritis and gout drugs. So mild rheumatoid arthritis, you would actually start them with sulfasalazine and hydroxychloroquine. Adverse effects of these drugs are um, kinkonism, I can never say this, and G6PD deficiency. Um, severe rheumatoid arthritis, um, you have to use NSAIDs, methotrexate, and etanercept as possible drugs. For gout, you have acute versus chronic. Acute gout uh, is your NSAIDs and your colchicine. And for chronic gout, which is uh, mostly prophylaxis, you can use allopurinol, probenicid, and rasburicase. All right, I believe that is it. And um, hope you enjoyed this um, short review. Thank you for your time.